This is the Eric John Phelps Show on 24-7 World Radio. And now, Eric John Phelps. Welcome. And again, I say welcome to the broadcast today here at 24-7 World Radio. Another Eric John Phelps coming to you live and direct from the bustling Mahop metropolis in Newest Town, Pennsylvania, with our one stoplight. So if you ever come to visit and you hit the one stoplight, you know you're not far from the office here, from the church. So welcome to the broadcast. It's the Ministry of Reformation Bible Puritan Baptist Church, of which I am the elder bishop by office and pastor teacher by gift. This broadcast for the spiritual and temporal benefit of my people, the minority Caucasian races of the world, including the Angles, Saxons, Celts, Slavs, Teutons, Franks, Normans, Scotch-Irish, and every other branch of the white Caucasian race. Yes, it is Monday, March 28th. Monday, March 28th. Concerning spiritual matters, this broadcast for the unification of white men and preaching the gospel to unsaved white men that they too may obtain salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, King of the Hebrew Jewish Israelites, and the great God and Savior of the Church, that is the body of Christ, to the exclusion of Satan's Jesuit-ruled religio-political, papal Roman Catholic institution seated in Rome, that great city and great whore which rules over the kings of the earth. Indeed, the Lord Jesus Christ is the great God and Savior, According to Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, for those of you who deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he is called the great God and Savior of chapter, verse 10, Titus chapter 2, verse, let me see here, Titus 2, 13 and 14, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We see the very same thing in Second Peter, chapter one, verses one and two, or actually verse one. Simon Peter, a servant and the uh, an, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that are have obtained like precious faith, with us through the righteousness of God through our Savior, the, the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So, God and our Savior Jesus Christ is the deity of Christ right there. And there's a little Greek rule called the Granville Sharps rule that makes it so that it's obviously the great God and even our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. God and Savior is defining this, the now in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, you, you guys that deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to overcome those two verses. And I'm sure you do because you just deny them. <laughs> okay, back to the announcement. Concerning temporal, political, cultural matters, this broadcast is also for the preservation of the racially white, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Slavic, Protestant, and Baptist peoples, historically used by God to break the power of the Pope's murderous and warring dark ages, that bloody disgrace to the history of man having spanned a thousand years, from AD 606 to 1648. We shall be reminded that Caucasian, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and Baptist Calvinists began the Protestant Reformation which birthed the modern era in 1648 with the Peace Treaty of Westphalia, ending the Black Pope's 30 Years' War, waged from 1618 to 1648. Remember, the Calvinists were the only fighting Protestants. And had it not been for them, there would be no political liberty that was birthed in 1648 with the beginning of the modern era. Those are facts. Therefore, a defense will be made for the preservation of the minority, white, Caucasian, old calendar, Orthodox Christian, Protestant Christian, and Baptist Christian peoples against our plotted racial, linguistic, cultural, historical, and national destruction by Rome, implemented by her Anglo-American international white power structure, using the mass-murdering, anti-Christ, anti-Reformation Bible religions of Shia, Sunni, and Wahhabi Islam, socialist communism, and socialist fascism, his traitorous leaders secretly working together as directed by high-level Freemasons loyal to the Antichrist Pope of Rome, as every Pope is an Antichrist, and the final one will be the Antichrist, as well as the Papal Caesar's international white power structure imposing Antichrist, unbiblical, socialist communist policies resulting in forced amalgamation, subsequent racial miscegenation, which nature itself teaches us that, is a sh that it is a shame— 
I don't see the Canadian snow geese mix them with the with the dark and uh, uh, geese. All the white geese stick with the white geese, and the dark and white geese stick with the dark and white geese. That's what nature teaches us. Okay. God has created the races among the same species of man to keep us separate. And nature teaches us that we shouldn't do it. But we believe the religion of communism and universal equality. And we're all the same. And all this, all that all the difference is just the color of your skin, which is nonsense. To get us to embrace this religion that will destroy us, especially us white people. Because we are the world's minority race. Only 10% of the world's population is white. Did you know that? Okay, going on. <clears throat> Therefore, a defense will be made for the preservation of the minority, white, Caucasian, old calendar, Orthodox, Christian, Protestant, Christian, and Baptist Christian peoples uh, implemented against our plotted racial, linguistic, cultural, historical, and national destruction by Rome, implemented by her Anglo-American international white power structure. The international... Anglo-American international white power structure hates white people. It hates white nations. Because white people of white nations, particularly Protestant nations, and there have been some Catholic nations too, like France, resisted the white Anglo-Saxon, the white Anglo-American international white power structure successfully in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it was decreed by the devil and his high Masonic servants, serving the Jesuit general, that they're going to destroy white Protestant nations. We're going to destroy all white nations, so if they ever become Protestant, they'll be further weakened by their miscegenation. That's the game. That's what the Jesuits push in Hollywood, the press, the major corporations. I look at these signs up when I drive along the road. I see all these black signs in white neighborhoods. Black advertisements. And I say, who's, who's putting up these advertisements? All these big corporations. Because you see, my white people, my white brethren, they hate us. They want to destroy us. They want to miscegenate us, race mix us. So the offspring being mulattoes will never be able to sustain a historic white civilization. They don't have it intellectually. And you check that out. So you, that's why, you see, that's why they attack this, the whole topic of eugenics. Eugenics is nothing but a wicked race. Oh, no, it's not. Eugenics is a legitimate study of all particular species. Realize there's some horses that are smarter than others. Realize there's some dogs that are smarter than others. Realize, realize there's some horses that are more muscular than orders. others, like a quarter horse with its rear end is more muscular than an Arabian. Did you know that? There are differences within the species when it comes to animals, and there are differences within the species when it comes to man. Don't tell me eugenics is entirely of the devil. Now, these devil worshipers take a legitimate eye science like that, and they corrupt it by saying, therefore, since we have white supremacy or white dominance or white superiority in intellectual matters, why do we have the justification to kill anybody who's not white you see that's 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 uh oh that wicked sinner that came out with the uh, evolution on the beagle looks like an ape himself that white guy uh, that's what they do they use survive the sur uh, survival of the species survival of the, of the fittest species as a justification for destroying races not of their own not of their white race that's not the proper use of eugenics. Eugenics objectively examines the differences in the races of the people, comes to objective conclusions, which is all the more reason why we should all racially separate into our own peoples, our own nations. They got to shove miscegenation down our throats. And now we have these millennials, these white millennials, they don't know up from down. They don't know what they're male or female, not to mention white or black or Asian, whatever particularly the white millennials. They don't know anything, and they hate themselves because they're white. And that's exactly what the Jesuits and their National Education Association wants in this country. Hate that make white people hate themselves. And that all started way back in the 1960s. I remember it in high school. 
Further, a defense would be made for the preservation of the and glorious white Protestant Reformation, including the high and lofty, yet rhythmic and beautiful white language of English, enshrined in the AV 1611 Bible, used by the one triune God to evangelize all the nations of the earth with English-speaking peoples, especially the British, Australian, Canadian, American, Caucasian peoples during the last 500 years. What race did God use to evangelize the world? What race? And what language? It happened to be white race peoples, and it happened to be the white language of English. To a certain degree German, to a certain degree Dutch, but it happened to be the white language of English. What for? Why? Because God chose that people and chose that language because of its supremacy in the English language that's had so compatible with and translating the Hebrew, and so God chose to use it. It happened to be a white language with white people doing it, financing it and getting to the end of the earth. White people did it. Black folk didn't do it. Asians didn't do it. Uh, Shema, Shemitic Central Americans and South Americans, a.k.a. Hispanic, didn't do it. We did it. And you need to deal with that. And you got to ask yourself why. And indeed, do we have an intellectual and cultural supremacy over all other races? Do we? The only ones who have an intellectual supremacy over us are the racial Hebrew Jewish Israelites. They're 11% higher in their IQ tests. And when they are join us and we help them and they, when they live in our countries, we fully are blessed by their intellectual abilities. Further, this broadcast calls for the voluntary separation of white. Reformation, Bible-believing, anti-Roman papacy, pro-Julian calendar, anti-Jesuit Gregorian calendar, anti-World Council of Churches, old calendar Orthodox Christians that are being slaughtered right now in the eastern Ukraine. Eastern Ukraine is Orthodox. Western Ukraine is Roman Catholic. And that Western Ukrainian army has Jesuit priests in it, advising it. So what they want is they want to just use their Russian horde to destroy Eastern Orthodox peoples that are Slavic, but not come all the way into Western Ukraine and kill off the Catholics because this is a purge now of Slavic Ukrainians pursuant to the Council of Trent. You see, it never changes, folks. You got to see the Jesuit hand in all these wars and politics. If you don't, you missed it. That's why we want to establish our own new white nation within Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania having declared her independence from FDR's Jesuitical de facto military government of the United States, cleverly imposed by presidential proclamations 2039-2040, approved and confirmed by Congress on March, since March 9, 1933, our new nation to be called pro baptical for Protestants, Baptists, and Calvinists. That's right. And if you don't like it, stay out. We don't want you. You do all your... Religion mixing and race mixing and language mixing, you go ahead and you keep doing it in your countries and continue to weaken them, but don't do it in my country. And if that's what you insist upon, you want to call me racist because of this, I call you a servant of the devil and the Lord rebuke you. I hate nobody. I hate no race of people. I prefer my own white race as I should, and I want to see its preservation as I should, and I want to see it prosper as I should because they're my people. The Apostle Paul had a burden for his own Hebrew Jewish Israelite people. The Lord Jesus Christ came to his own Hebrew Jewish Israelite people, Matthew 15. He wasn't sent to the Gentiles. Why was he racist and a bigot? Now, you see, a black man can be for his people, and a Hispanic man can be for his people, and an Asian man can be for his people, but we white folk, we can't be for our own people because the whole organized international press of the Pope is designed to beat us down into the ground. And I've had enough, and it's time that we white folk get together and decide to have a nation somewhere in North America so we can preserve our race and our language and our culture, particularly our Protestant and Baptist culture and the Bibles that we've translated and the industries that we've built and the inventions that we've made. I want to preserve it. Why do you think, well... Why do you think the Jesuits, with their expositions from about, their international expositions from about 1850 to 1900, why do you think they demonstrated all this high, white, Protestant culture, inventions, building, architecture? 
They were lighting lights in these expositions without wires. They were drawing off the ether and lighting tens of thousands of lights without wiring. Why do you think the Pope's Masonic Lodge got this all together, financed it and built it, and then destroyed it by no later than 1915, preferably about 1900? Why were all those expositions burnt to the ground? Because that was the Masonic symbol of the phoenix going down in his ashes. Western civilization going down in his ashes, only to arise as the Pope's new world order pursuant to the doctrine of the counter-reformation of the Jesuit order in the Council of Trent. Yeah, that's why they did it. That's why they had the great Chicago fire burn down that exposition. That's why they burnt down Pennsylvania's first Capitol building in 1900. They burned down all these wonderful monuments to the Protestant Reformation and the high scientific advancements. Burned them to the ground. They destroyed the beginning of the scientific advancement of proper geography that the earth is a plane properly put forth by Alexander Gleason that all stopped and we're all given a globe to look at because they're fully determined to destroy the advancements and the progress of white people when we read the Bible and we acted upon it and the cultures and the civilizations that we made back in a moment 24 7 World Radio, Brother Eric John Phelps. This is The Eric John Phelps Show on 24 7 World Radio. This is Brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Bruder Nicolas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören, jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags, amerikanische Zeit, für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und 3 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio. 24-7. Dit is Boeder Nico. U bent hartelijk uitgenodigd om elke dinsdag om 2 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Duitse Bijbel waarheidsuur te volgen en 3 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbel waarheidsuur te volgen op 24-7 World Radio. This is 24-7 World Radio, and you're listening to The Eric John Phelps Show. I realize there's a deviation from my normal introduction, but I'm uh, given over to the topic today of having a dream, having a vision. Now, God doesn't give men visions anymore he hasn't the last vision he gave a man was the prophet john in the book of the revelation at the island of patmos that was the last one nobody has any visions today and they haven't since since about 96 AD 96 when the book of the revelation of jesus christ was finished i'm talking about a a vision of a dream. Now, sometimes I'm talking to you older folks, us older folks, I'm 68, I'll be 69 this year. Now, you see, white folks are, get older and they start to get near retirement. They just give up. All those years of education and, and experience and tremendous wealth in your heads, of how the world really works and what you've experienced firsthand is all put to the shelf because you see, now I'm retired. 
<laughs> I'm retired, so I'm just going to get my little social security check and maybe some pension from someplace, and, and that's what I'm going to do. And uh, and so that's uh, – thank you, brother. And so I'm retired, and I'm just going to get my little pension check, and, uh, I, and I don't care about anything else going on. I don't care about anybody. I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and relax and uh, go to the beach, and I couldn't care less about anything else. That's the majority – of you white people that are over 60, do you have any dreams? Do you have any gripping dreams, things you want to accomplish before you die? Because we're going to die. Do you? Well, my message today is Proverbs 29, 18. And it's this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. If we don't have a vision, if we don't have a vision, then we're going to perish. Your leader should have a vision. Your political leader should have a vision. If they don't have a vision, what are they in public office for anyway? Your preacher should have a vision. If they don't have a vision to the accomplishment of some deed that they get up every morning for, what good are they? A banker should have a vision. A banker should have a vision whereby he can make it possible for everybody to move into their own home without having to pay for it for the last 30 years of their life. That's what a banker's vision ought to be. Doctors, they ought to have a vision. They ought to have a vision that, well, I'm going to teach so that the people won't need me except in a crisis, like for a major surgery or something like that. Because the vision is, I don't want to see any more cancer. I don't want to see any more heart disease, quote unquote. I don't want to see any more strokes. I don't want to see any more heart attacks, infarctions. I don't want to see any more diabetes. All of that's totally unnecessary So the doctor should have a vision of getting rid of those three major killers of people in this country. The food men, the ones who run the food industry, they should have a vision. No, we're not putting any canola oil or any of this other poison in our food anymore. We're not going to use any of this white flour with added iron to it to further sicken people. We're not going to do that. We're going to have pure foods, whole foods. We're going to have real foods. So that the culture, so that the people in the culture can become healthy. Yeah, we got a vision for that. I want to have a healthy culture. I want to have people that are healthy so that as they learn their skills and their profession, they can live a long, professional, prosperous life and have children, three, four, five, six, eight, ten children, and to continue to grow the nation because you have to be married. You have to have children if your nation is going to continue. That's why homosexuality and LGBTQ, or whatever you want to call them, that's all outlawed, as it ought to be outlawed in any culture serving God and want to prosper. It's outlawed, man. And if you want to be a sodomite, you just go somewhere else, but don't come to my country. But let's even get more personal. The vision for, 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 for preachers ought to be truly, truly to preach against sexual sin so that people don't become enslaved to it. And then the preacher influences the, the statesman, and you make it illegal to commit adultery. And when you commit adultery, then there's penalties for that. Abortion is going to be murder. You commit abortion, you just committed murder, and we're going to treat you accordingly. Abortion is outlawed in my country. This is the way it used to be in America. Realize that? America used to not have miscegenation. We didn't use to race mix. We had segregation. It's all truly white Protestant peoples do. That's what we did in South Africa. That's what we did in Rhodesia. That's what we did in England. That's what we did in, in uh, America. That's what we did in Canada. But the more we get Roman Catholicized, the more we miscegenate. Because the devil cannot stand the thought 
of the different races being preserved with their own unique weaknesses and strengths to the glory of God. Because you see, God is diverse, and he created mankind diversely through the three sons of Noah, and he wants it that way. My country, with vision, the women are not equal to the men. That's right. No women voting. Now, I know that's probably going to make some of you women supporters want to not support me anymore, but I'm sorry. That's just the way it's got to be. Women's suffrage was a sin and a crime, and they got nothing out of it except more fighting with their husbands in, inside their homes. Oh, I'm going to vote for so-and-so. I'm going to vote for so-and-so. Well, that'll neutralize us. Women's greatest role is in the aiding and the helping of their man to fulfill his destiny that God has called him to, and he needs the wife to do that. Without her, he will not succeed. The greatest successful men of white Protestant nations have been married with wives who helped them, like George Washington, whose wife Martha helped him, like Stonewall Jackson, the great Confederate general, whose wife Julia helped him. And so the women are going to return to the high and lofty purpose of helping their husband so that he can become who he's supposed to be. That's my dream. That's the way it used to be. In this case. You realize, I remember growing up when mothers, when wives didn't work. That's back in the 50s. I remember when the women started going to work back in the late 50s, early 60s. That was the beginning of the end of the family in this country and an open door for adultery because when you're working in a plant somewhere and you're working around other men, the nature takes over, the sin nature takes over, and you're not going to be committing adultery. The women leaving the home was the beginning of the end of the American family, all made possible by the Post Federal Reserve Bank and driving the cost of living up and taking the gold out of circulation. That's how it used to be in America. It used to be a great place until the Pope ruined it, which means there's another vision we're going to have to have for a new nation, and that is no Roman Catholic priests, no Roman Catholic bishops, no Roman Catholic archbishops, no Roman Catholic cardinals, and no Pope will ever disgrace our nation by placing his filthy feet on our glorious soil dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ because he hates God, he hates the Bible, he hates those of us who preach the true gospel. The papacy, the doctrine of the papacy makes it quite clear that they want to kill us all. And so you're not going to be coming into my country until you denounce and renounce the doctrine of the temporal power. Mm -hmm. So no Roman Catholics either. Sorry, Catholics, as long as you become Catholic, as long as you're Catholic and you hold to the doctrine of the temporal power, which is part of your confession of faith, whether you know it or not, you can't come here and you can't vote. So don't come here. Stay in your own wrecked Roman Catholic countries with your tyrants, and your military dictators. You stay over there. And you can think about why you're so miserable and why you don't have enough food and why you're broke and why you have no middle class. You think about it. Why? 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 Crime everywhere. Prostitution everywhere. Gangs everywhere. Tyrants everywhere. Think about it. Why? Why? And you can look across the seas to see pro baptica why we don't have that. We have limited republics, and we have, we have people that are in public office that are servants of we the people, and they're happy about it. And what can we do to help you, uh, Mr. Phelps, that you've come to our office today? Because we know you're one of we the people, and we're your trustee, we're your servants. And so what can we do to help you? And there's virtually no crime. And crime that does, it get, does be committed will be punished severely according to the rigors of the common law because we will have old American common law once again and old American equity, be it exclusive, ancillary, or auxiliary. We're going to have it all. We're going to have what we once have here in Pennsylvania. I'm going to break out Blackstone's commentaries. I'm going to break out that Pennsylvania Supreme Court justice. His name is Sharswood. And we're going to break out Sharswood Blackstone's commentaries. And that's going to be the foundation for our law schools. And my new probaptical, which was modeled after Pennsylvania to a certain degree. That's my dream. 
our national language is going to be English. And no one's going to say, and now if you want to speak Spanish, press two. None of that stuff anymore. If you want to speak Spanish, go to Spanish-speaking country. We don't speak Spanish. That's a Roman Catholic language. And we don't speak it in Protestant English-speaking America or in Probaptical. It's the language you want, man. Go to Mexico. Go to all those broken countries, broken by the Jesuits. Stay there and speak your Spanish. And be in poverty and have no middle class and have no real money and have no political leaders that are patriotic because, you see, you can't resist the papacy as long as you're serving the devil. If you're not saved, you can't resist the papal government. Yeah, I have a dream. I have a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream, but he never wrote that speech. Somebody wrote that for him. Yeah. So if we're going to recover ourselves from this horrible place that we're in as white people in this country. If you're a white man, you're nothing. You have nothing going for you here. The government and academia and the press is constantly railing against you every day, every way to deprive you of your true history, of your abilities, of your leadership abilities, so that it will come to the point where you're f frustrated and furious about it. And now the Jesuits are saying, well, are you, are you tired of this, white people? Have you had enough now? Come over here to my new right. Come over here with Steve Bannon. Come over here with Roger Stone. Come over here with all these new right quasi-fascists. Come and follow us. Yeah. Uh-huh. Come and follow my choice servants of the Pope, pretending to be against the Pope. When they know Jesuit Francis I rules them, rules the new right, rules Donald Trump, rules all those all DeSantis out of Florida, uh, the governor of Texas, what's his name? Can't quite remember. Um, all Roman Catholic. They're all busy serving the Pope, all pretending to be conservative when they're really ultra quasi fascist when their colors are truly shown and now we can start blaming the Kazarian mafia when it's the Jesuits who've done it all and there is no such thing as the Kazarian mafia it's just another catchword for the Jews they want to bait us they want to sucker us now that they've hurt us and plundered us for these last 80 years then to hurt us into the new right is that what you want well, that's not what I want I have a vision. I have a vision that God will make a way where we can have our own country here in North America. The Jews can live among us if they wish. But the Talmud is not going to be allowed. You keep that out of my country. Any book that says Jesus Christ was a bastard and his money with mother was a whore, you keep that out of my country. I don't want that there. You have censorship? Of course we have censorship. Also pornography. There's no pornography allowed in my country. People that produce pornography, and if they're caught in my country, it's a capital offense. So don't do it in my probaptical because we'll kill you for it. All you poor women that are addicted to drugs and you're doing it to get drug money, we'll rehabilitate you. We'll get you rehabilitated, teach you something how to do, and you can start coming to our churches and hear the truth and preaching the gospel and get saved and every sin's forgiven. But you men, you white men serving the Pope, making all this porn, uh, we're going to execute you. We're going to hang you. If we find you making pornography in probaptical, so don't come. Same way with you dope pushers. You want to push dope in my country? You want to sell dope? Death penalty. We're going to hang you at the yard arm, 12 o'clock high noon. And everybody can watch. You don't sell your dope in my country. Now, we have legalized, we have legalized uh, cannabis for medical purposes. We don't use it for recreation, just like we don't use alcohol for recreation. We don't get drunk with alcohol. Alcohol will be, I, don't, I shouldn't say alcohol, because that includes rubbing alcohol and isopropyl alcohol. Of course, that's legal. But we're not going to be drinking any alcohol. We're going to be drinking wine and strong drink, as the Bible teaches. But we're not going to tolerate drunkenness. We're going to punish crime, and we're going to reward good in my new nation of Probaptical. 
So all you white people that want to have some sort of semblance of civilization and morality, come to my news nation of ProBaptical. And I'm starting it here in Pennsylvania, and you just need to start settling in this area because when things get hot, I'm declaring independence. I'm declaring the independence of Lebanon County, and maybe the next county can go to, to Lancaster County, maybe the next county of the historic Protestant counties of, of um, Berks County. But we're just going to start declaring our independence. Because this government in Washington, District of Columbia, from which the commander-in-chief is oppressing us and has for the last 89 years, wants to kill you. My question is to you, why do you want to still stay subject to it? Why? Are we stupid? Or are we cowards? Either way, it's unacceptable for a free people to be like that. There are time, fellas, back in a moment. Without a vision, the people perish. This is The Eric John Phelps Show on 24 7 World Radio. This is 24 7 World Radio. And you're listening to The Eric John Phelps Show. Without a vision, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You see, as we are reading the Word of God, we're not Israel, we're not keeping the Ten Commandments, okay? We're not keeping the Sabbath. Nobody kept the Sabbath until Moses did. He was given the Ten Commandments. That's for Israel. It's not for the church, the body of Christ. We meet on the first day of the week. I mean, if you want to meet on the Sabbath, that's your business. The Bible doesn't say, New Testament doesn't say anywhere that we should meet on any specific day, but I choose to meet on the first day of the week. I don't want to be identified with Israel. I'm not Israel. I'm a white Gentile. I'm not a racial Hebrew Jewish Israelite. So, without a vision, we're going to perish, but we're going to keep the Word of God. The Bible will be the foundation of our culture, as it used to be in once white Protestant, Calvinistic, Baptist America. Do you realize the reason why we have common schools is because the Puritans, without the fighting Puritan Calvinists, we would never have a common school system that was intended to educate the young people to read the Bible. That's why the Bible was taught in the schools. And the classic works that the schools used was called the McGuffey Readers. And for those of you educating your children at home, you need to use the McGuffey Readers because it's all based on the Bible. As A is for Adam and, and his fall, B is for so-and-so, and it goes all the way on to Z. Why should we be victims of a military government here in whatever state you're living in, here in Pennsylvania, have to stay home and educate our children properly while at the same time paying an ungodly property tax to finance these schools of the devil that, thanks to the devil's Supreme Court back in 1963, took our glorious AV 1611 Bible out of our schools that we founded and that we paid for. Now, the Jesuits did it through their 33rd degree Freemason, Earl Warren, the same one who covered up the Kennedy assassination. Mm -hmm. So, why should we be victimized by that anymore? Why can't we have public schools like we used to have? You know, grades, what? Kindergarten and what, first grade, and then we can have second grade through fourth, and we can divide them up like that. And we're not going to have any organized sports. That's gone. Bye-bye. No baseball, no backball, no football, none of that glorifying, flesh-glorifying idolatry. That's gone. And we're going to school to learn something so we can compete with the Chinese and the other Asian nations that work themselves to death when they go to school. They want to be at top of their class because they work, 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 work. Well, you know what? 
You have white people that are not on drugs and not on devitalized food. We're the smartest people anywhere and we'll outdo anyone. But we got to have a vision for it. We got to want to do it. And we have to have teachers that hold us to the fire to make it do it. And if we don't do it, we get some sort of discipline. And there's none of this bit. You either pass or fail. No, you got A, B, C, D, or F. You need to go have the shame of failure. That's the way it used to be. And it was based on white Anglo-Saxon, Bible-based Protestant and Baptist culture. That's right. Why do you think the Jesuits didn't want those Catholic children going to white Protestant schools? Because they'd be learning the Bible and they'd be learning excellence and they would excel in scholastic things. But now when they took the Bible out, the Jesuits would say, okay, you can send all you Catholic people, you can send your children to public school. We don't care. Because they want to stupid and dumb down and not knowing anything about any sciences. They want it all irrelevant. So when you study geometry, what's the big deal about geometry? What a bore. I tell you what, you want to build a porch someday? If you become a contractor, a concrete contractor, whatever, and you want a, you want a round porch going off a door, you better know a little geometry. Make it practical. See, my schools, my educational schools, I make it practical. And I have the best teachers in the world teaching the young people of Probaptical, and they will excel in everything. Everything. They'll be second to nobody. We'll go back to the greatest literature ever written. We're going to go back to having the Oxford Dictionary, the greatest dictionary ever written by, and written by white people that spoke English. We're going to go back to the greatest systematic theologies ever written, like Lewis Berry Chafer's Systematic Theology, eight volumes. There's Charles Hodge and there's some others. But we're going to go back to the best. And we're going to be teaching the Bible in our schools so that when men graduate, they at least know the books of the Bible and some of the basic doctrines of the Bible. How can you, how can you consider yourself educated if you don't know anything about the Bible? You are, an, uh, you are not educated. You're not littered, literate. And I uh, was told by, by one of my teachers in Bible college, Dr. Dr. Lambert Carter, if you haven't read Calvin's Institutes, you are illiterate. The Institutes of John Calvin, Institutes of the Christian Religion, is one of the ten most influential works ever written, even admitted by those pagans, Will and Ariel Durant, in their history of civilization. We're going to go back to real history. We're going to go back to how civilization was born out of the Pope's Dark Ages. We're going to expose the Jesuits on how they want to destroy everything. We're going to tell that they were behind in the destruction of the expositions, expositions that were in primarily white Protestant countries. And how they were destroyed by the post-Masonic Lodge, not allowing us to access the high technology that's a result of freedom of conscience and freedom of investigation championed in white Protestant nations. We shouldn't have these stupid-looking telephone poles. What a disgrace. And these electric lines going everywhere. What a disgrace. We should be all running our homes out of the ether, drawing energy right out of the atmosphere and giving us power in our homes and having lights with no wires to them. That's right. Our cars, our cars should be either powered by electromagnetic motors or we can have the internal combustion engine. We're just going to run hydrogen through the engine. And guess what? There's no pollution. And oxygen comes out the tailgate because you're going to be mixing hydrogen with oxygen in the air. And that comes out of the tailpipe. Pardon me. We're going to champion the seven sciences in my new nation that I started a business on many, many years ago. I haven't done any business with it, but it's at least a business that's set up. It's called Lovem, light. There are many different facets of light that are for healing and for power. Oxygen, for healing and for power. Water, for healing and for power. Vibration. Frequency vibration for healing and for power. Electricity, DC current. Magnetism. Oh, hydrogen. H, hydrogen. To power our cars. And magnetism, particularly North Pole magnetism for our health and other purposes. You combine DC current with, with uh, magnetism, you're going to have electromagnetic motor. 
and you don't need central power. How would you like to cut loose of central power? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Go on. How about having some real money? How about having some white man, pro white Protestant and Baptist gold and silver coin? How about that? The Constitution be brought back for pro -baptical. No state shall make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debt. How would you like that? So that when you work for something, you get paid in a silver dollar, and you get older, and 50 years later, that silver dollar is just worth as much as then when you earn it as it is when you're 70 years of age. That's called honest money. Gold coin, silver coin. Silver coin is the work of man's money. I remember when people, men used to get paid in silver back in the 1950s. I was born in 53. So out through the 50s, they were going to be getting paid for in silver. My parents, when they used to go gamble in, in uh, Reno, they used to bring back silver dollars. They don't have that anymore. They got chips. So we're going to have honest money. We're going to have land that's held in a lodial freehood. That means you hold your land, you hold your property as a matter of common right or fundamental right. And it cannot be excise taxed. Which leads me to one of my newer projects for my advanced class I'll be teaching, and that's how to stop the property tax. Oh my God, what are we going to do? We don't have any more property tax. Oh, the schools are going to go down and our children will be stupid. Your children will be smarter without those schools. They won't be brainwashed anymore, at least, and programmed into think how they're supposed to think. Sodomite and they'll be GPQ and uh, we got to decide if we're a male or female. All that trash is not going to be taught in any school anymore. I want them all to go broke. And the people can start saying, my children are going to learn this. We're not lo lo losing that, uh, you're not learning that pro-black, pro-alien, pro pro-Spanish speaking, pro-everything pro but us. Uh-oh, that's gone now. We're preserving our, our people. That for once, finally. And we'll spend our money and our time to get it done. By the way, who invented, who, who invented all these guns and manufactured them, fellas? Uh, white men. The gun manufacturers, the gun inventors, all done by white men, not any black manufacturers, not any Hispanic and not any Asian. It's all black. And if there are Asians, they learn it from some white man. That's ours. Firearms are ours. That's our invention. Especially machine guns. Invented by a white Englishman to mow down these Catholic armies when they came out to kill you because you're reading the Bible. So... In my country of Probaptical, that's my vision, everybody is armed. All you women are armed, all you men are armed, unless you've committed some sort of felony and, and the felony of violence that will be punished severely. And that's not going to happen very much in my country. When it does, we'll punish it severely, as the Lord's going to punish it severely in his millennial kingdom. So, Everybody's going to be armed. And if you don't want to carry a gun in my country, you've got to get a license not to carry a gun. Yeah. And we're going to charge you $500 a year not to carry a gun. Everybody carries. Because you cannot conquer a weapons-carrying population. That's why the Japanese really didn't want to invade America, because they knew the average American was armed. They'd have to fight the whole population. And that's why we're going to be armed. That's right. And we're not going to have any gun registration either. You're going to go down to the store. You're going to buy it. That's right. And have a happy day and glorify God and take a class. Everybody that owns one is going to have to take a class of how to use your weapon. So you don't accidentally shoot yourself or somebody else. You see, this is how you govern a country. And it takes men with vision to bring it to pass. It's not going to be just one man. It has to be a nation of professionals, the intellect and intelligentsia, the intelligentsia that wants to bring this to pass, the intelligentsia that reads the Bible and is humbled before God and wants to do his will.
for the benefit of their people, then you can have a country. Mm -hmm. Then you will have leaders with a repentant population and a believing of the Bible. Then you will have leaders fitting for you. Leaders like George Washington, who never took one penny to be the commander of the American army. Godly man that he was. A Baptist and a Calvinist baptized in the Hudson River by his favorite chaplain, John Gano, in 1783, witnessed by a hundred people, according to the great author and man of God, William P. Grady. Okay. All that's going to happen. Washington gave $75,000 of his own money to help the great revolution break the power of Jesuit-ruled King George III and his bloodthirsty rapacious, murderous British army that would herd Protestants into the Protestant church and set it on fire and burn them alive. Mm -hmm. We need to remember history. We need to start reading the Reformation Bible. We need to start reading proper doctrine. And our intellectuals need to repent of their of their collusion in destroying this country. And then you need to come to my country. Come to Probaptical. Be a portion of Pennsylvania. We have the greatest fighters in the world. The greatest warriors, the greatest fighters in the world are white men that read the Bible and are Calvinistic and realize they have the right to wield the sword of just defense. None of this turning the cheek in my country. Now, if there'll be Mennonites there and there'll be Amish there, and if they want to turn the other cheek, well, that's fine. They can make our weapons, they can make our uniforms, they can grow our food, and we'll do the fighting. That's exactly what uh, the great founder of freedom of conscience did in his nation of the Netherlands, William of Orange. And that the Anabaptists and the non-resistors, they could make the socks for the army. But we'll go ahead and do the fighting. And it's going to have to be people of my country. We're not going to have any mercs, no mercenaries. They're out because they never fight for liberty anyway. They just fight for money. I could go on. But unless we have a vision, white men, we're going to perish we're going to perish at the hands of these Roman Catholics and Masonic Jews and Masonic Protestants in their up-and-coming great reset, if they're going to bring that to pass. But in their up-and-coming Sino-Soviet Muslim invasion, because this government built the Russian Empire, the, the USSR, and gave it all of its weapons, this government did the same way with Red China. And now that they've built this huge military host in Russia and China, they want to use it against us. And my question is, are you just going to let it happen? Or are you going to have a vision and start financing me and other men like me who are going to continue to preach the truth? Because you should probably know that men like me don't have long to live. And when we're finally killed, you will be smiting yourselves thinking, you know what? We should have helped Phelps. I know the guys like him. The opportunity will be gone. Your money will be worthless. And now you're going to go down to a foreign occupation. And you don't want to see what the soldiers of foreign nations are going to do to your women because it's one Huge, ceaseless gang rape. That's what's coming for you white men and your white women and your white daughters and your white mothers. That's what the Russians did to the German women. That's what they did to the Polish women. And that's what they're going to do here when they finally arrive. Is that what you want? You want to go down without a fight? Without a vision, you're going to perish. And you need one. Time to repent. Time to believe the gospel that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again. Time to help this ministry. You can either be a member or an associate of my church. And it's time that we got busy acquitting ourselves as men, men of God. Back in a moment, 24-7, World Radio.